We're now going to derive the inverse. We also want to be able to go from this thing back to our original signal, xn. Okay, so we, we also need the inverse. Okay, now we want to derive the inverse discrete time Fourier transform. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to basically hack this signal a little bit. We're going to start, so this is x, s, f. This is the spectrum of the sampled signal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to strip out one window from this signal. So I'm going to strip out a little window running from minus fs over 2 to fs over 2. And this little window, so it's a little signal that 0, 0, 0 bumps up and then 0, 0, 0. I'm just going to call that the sampled signal sf with a little hat on it. Okay, and This is just equal to x s f um for if f is f is over two smaller than f is over two okay and zero otherwise now to get back to the actual xs f what i need is i need to convolve this thing with the impulse train i know this seems a little bit backwards but it's going to make our lives a lot easier and the impulses will sit in the frequency domain at minus 2 fs at minus fs at zero at fs and at 2 fs and so on so it's very similar to what we did when we did the forward discrete time fourier transform now i'm going to take the inverse fourier transform of that thing on both sides very quickly, the in, if I take the inverse Fourier transform on both sides, what happens to that convolution? Convolution becomes multiplication. Okay, awesome. So now I just have um, very quickly. What is the inverse Fourier trans? What is the inverse Fourier transform of an impulse train? It's actually another impulse train. This thing is just equal to one over f s. It's a little impulse train in the time domain t minus n over f s the other the other thing i need is this term here right that's the other one i need in order to complete this thing and so for that what i'll do is i'll just write it out the inverse fourier transform which looks very similar to the fourier transform it just doesn't have a plus ach a minus it just has a plus 2 pi f t and then I always forget, should I integrate f or t? I know the result of this thing should be in the time domain, so I know I should be integrating out frequency, tf. Okay? And that, because this is the windowed signal of the original thing, that is just equal to the integration from minus fs over 2, because it's 0 everywhere else, to fs over 2 of my actual sampled signal. Okay. Okay, now I plug this thing here in there. I plug this thing, well, this thing here in there. And that actually gives me my sampled signal, x s of t. It's just equal to, it's going to look a little bit monstrous. So, what is that equation? This equation is, well, yeah, what's this thing here? It's an impulse train. And so you're right, there's, there's several impulses, each of them landing at a different position, okay? And where do they land? They land, they land there's one at zero, there's one at one over fs, there's one at two over fs, there's one at minus one over fs. A different way to write one over fs is n times my sampling period, okay? So there's one at t, 2t, 3t, and then minus t, minus 2t, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's right. So that, that's this, this summation here, okay? What's, the, what's this thing on this side? What's this monstrosity? That looks really scary. There's an integral, blah, 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 blah. Um, but really what this thing is, is it's a function of time, okay? So there's an f there, but I'm going to integrate it out. Um, so the df, so the f will disappear and what I will end up with is some function in terms of time. It's a continuous function, okay? So taking that together, if we look at this whole thing, I've got an impulse train, I've got an impulse train with some continuous function thing, okay? Now let's quickly go back to this slide and just remind ourselves of what we're trying to do. 
We're trying to go from the um, discrete time Fourier transform back to the samples here. And what we've ended up with is a little equation for XST. And that equation is a bunch of impulses, each with a strength given by some continuous function. We end up with an impulse train with strengths given by this thing here. End up with an impulse train given by the strengths given by the signal. So the cool thing is those strengths given by that compli complicated integral, that is just the thing I'm looking for. I'm looking for, I'm looking for x0, x1, x2, x3 with the block, um, block notation, the discrete signals. And that is just the strengths of that continuous function at that time. So what that means is, if we go back to this slide, I can basically ignore the impulse train or just look at the strengths at those discrete points in time. And the strengths at those points, that is actually the thing I'm looking for. I'm looking for xn, and all I have to do is I just have to look at what happens at t and 2t and 3t and minus t and minus 2t and so on. So all I have to do is I just need to take this integration and plug in wherever there's a t, I just plug in nt. Okay, that's pretty easy. So we end up with 1 over fs, the integral from minus fs over 2 to fs over 2, times the spectrum times e j 2 pi f, and now nt, n capital T, d f. Awesome. Okay, we're almost there. Um, the only thing I, I dislike about this equation is that it's in terms of f, and I want it in terms of this f omega thing. Okay, xn is equal to that thing. But what I would really like is I would like this thing in terms to be in terms of this new discrete time frequency f omega, which I've defined as ft or defined as f over fs. Okay, that was somewhere in the derivation. And what this thing does is it normalizes out time it normalizes out the sampling frequency and that's pretty nice okay what do you do when you have an integral in terms of something but you want that integral to be in terms of some other variable change of variables that's exactly right okay so i want this thing to be in terms of d f omega okay then i always have to look this up but how you do it is you basically says say d f omega is equal to that i take the derivative with respect to um not f s to f, the variable that I'm changing from, okay? And what's the answer for that equation? t, that's right, or 1 over fs, okay? I'll just do 1 over fs. Okay, cool. So, and that means that df omega is equal to 1 over fs df. Okay, and now I'll just plug that in. Okay, so what I get here is, oh, this is wonderful. The df1 over fs that I need is already there. df over 1 fs. Okay, so I can just chuck that whole thing. So I just end up with an integral times e j 2 pi n. And I've made the substitution that uh, ft f t is equal to f omega. So I've got that already. And I have my f omega there. And then this is in terms of df omega. When I change variables, what else do I need to do? Change the limits. Whatever happened at f, now I need to check when that happens in f omega land. Okay, so when f was, oh, we make this little table. When f was minus fs over 2, what is the value of f omega? Minus a half, okay, cool. And the other side is a half. Okay, so we basically end up here with a, we go from minus a half to a half x n and this equation here this is just if i can make square lines this is the inverse discrete time fourier transform okay and what do you notice about that equation is there time anywhere in that equation no there's not, nothing about time so time has kind of disappeared and that kind of makes sense because on the computer I'm just I'm just saving these samples I'm not saving anything about the time and so therefore kind of something I mean it features somewhere the f omega stuff um, but in that equation we don't have any time information 
Okay, so that's the inverse discrete time Fourier transform. You can also write it in terms of omega. Just to emphasize again, all that this is, is it's just the Fourier transform, just the special case for the Fourier transform for discrete time signals.